Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are reading 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, hmm, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, another word for self-control, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, which is love. For if these be in you, and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful or unproductive in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. What I want you to think about is everything that we go through in our life, every single thing, the good, the bad, the unfair, the ugly, the painful, the joyful, the tearful, everything, even the shameful, everything we go through, even those things that are nothing but our fault. Listen, it all adds up to making your calling and election sure. There's not one thing you cannot do through Christ Jesus. I don't care how impossible you think it is. Picture this. This is what God's bringing to my mind right now. Imagine yourself being a surgeon and you have to do surgery on an inmate. And they roll the inmate in and everybody's got them prepped and you, you know, you're done with your hand washing and your sanitizing. You put on all your scrub and everything and you look at the patient at the, at the uh, chart and you're mortified. Now you're in Christ Jesus, but you're mortified. You've got a battle to win right here and now because you've got a job to do. And you look at the chart and you're saying, no, Lord, not this one, not this of all people, not this one. Right? What did you see on that chart? That's the man that either raped you or raped your daughter and almost killed her or may have killed her. Mm. Imagine trying to forgive that. A lot of times you can forgive somebody for what they did to you, but to, to your child, to your husband, to your wife, to your mother. Come on now, think about it. How can you forgive that person for such a cruel, heinous act? And now they're laying before you with their life in your hand. What are you going to do? Huh. What are you going to do? Now, it's not your gift that's going to be blessed. It's not your pocket that's going to get a raise for making the sacrificial act. But God deposits something into you. This is the unseen part of making your calling and election sure, sure fired. If you are able to take the time you need to pray to God, you may not be able to get on your knees. You got your scrubs on. This is something you got to handle right, right here and now, quick, fast, and hurry. No time to waste. And you're standing here with the gloves being put on your hands. And you're saying, God, this is if you really mean to make your calling an election sure. Do you really mean it now? Do you really mean it when you say self-denial? 
Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Mm. See, it's not God's will that any should perish, not even the one that killed your daughter. Think about this. Mm. Because they're damaged goods too. Damaged people or hurting people. Hurting people hurt people. God knows where the pain came from. He knows where the damage was done. He knows what got them so twisted. Think about that. And now their life is in your hand. What are you going to do? Accidentally on purpose, oops, and let them die on the, on the hospital bed, on the surgery table? Hmm. What are you going to do? You have an opportunity to rise above or sink to their level and let them die. What are you going to do? Hmm. Wow. That's something to think about. See, those are some of the challenges in life that can come your way because God has staged it that way. Why did he stage it? Why would he make you have to save the life of the person that took your child's life? Why would he do something like that? Because every time you present your bodies a living sacrifice, 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 holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, the least you can do. Every time you do that, God is adding to your stature spiritually. You're growing, growing, growing growing in magnificent ways that you don't even quite understand, but God does. And now, here you are a surgeon. That's your calling. That's your election. And when you let love rise above hate and you let forgiveness and mercy rise above judgment, you are making your calling and election sure. I never thought of that. That just popped in my head. Sometimes God will give us the most gruesome example to help us relate to a very painful decision. And if that person can make the decision, then sometimes God is saying, so can you. My question to you is, will you? Will you rise above you? Will you rise above your normal old ways, the ways of the world, the ways of vengeance, resentment, spite, revenge? Will you rise above an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth? Hmm. Let's see what jugular vein I can cut. Hasta la bye-bye, baby. I'm done. Some people will lose their jobs just to get a taste of vengeance, a taste of their enemy's blood. How low will you stoop or how high will you rise? Do you love God more than you love your child? Ooh. You love God more than you love yourself? Well, mm. how high will you reach? to please God. <laughs> That's something to think about. See, God has some challenges that can cross our paths and we'll be wondering how could God allow this? Why would God put me through that? Because God wants you to make your calling and election sure. We're the people of God, called by his name, called out of dark and delivered from shame. One holy race, saints, everyone, because of the love of Christ, Jesus, the Son. God bless you as you rise to God's occasion.
as you rise above the storm, rise above the hate, rise above the anger, rise above your bitterness, rise above you. God bless you. As you seek to please God, no matter how high you must reach and no matter how much of you, you must deny. It's a growing process. That's not an overnight success. But God will take you there from glory to glory, from strength to strength. He'll move you in that direction through increments. That's why we grow in faith. We grow in grace as God enables, as God gives us measure by measure, step by step, day by day, 